district governor uh, of Rotary District uh, 7890, which includes the four counties of western Massachusetts and the four northern counties of Connecticut. And we're fortunate to have 59 Rotary Clubs throughout our district, about 2,100 uh, Rotarians. And we're here today to talk about how Rotary is making a difference in the world with certain global projects that have impacted uh, people on every continent. Rotary is uh, in 200 countries. We have 1.2 million members. And we have a motto, which is uh, service above self. We're trying to make a, a difference in the, in the global village through providing uh, a variety of, of services. And today, we're talking about one of our six areas of service, uh, water and, uh, and sanitation. Uh, this is becoming a, a, um, a very critical area in many parts of the world with the decreasing of the aquifers. Um, and today, I'm very fortunate to have a, um, a guest with us, um, Rick Lawrence, who uh, happens to be uh, the chairperson of the Rotary District Water and Sanitation Committee and has also been uh, working with us for um, well over a decade now. Yes. And this, the particular project we're going to be uh, describing uh, means a lot to me because it began uh, the year I was uh, president of the West Hartford Rotary Club. And I guess we had, what was it, 11 uh, clubs that helped us out? A dozen. It was a dozen. Clubs. A, a 12, 12, 12 clubs. clubs that got together uh, to start a project which has been going every year uh, since then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, it, what impressed me about the needs, the first thing we do when we identify a, a global project is to determine uh, the need for uh, the project. And what we found is in Guatemala, among the Mayan Indians, uh, they had an issue with um, water and also uh, clean air in their homes. Apparently, even though it's the rainforest, they cooked in, in open hearths yes. uh, in their homes. The walls were covered with soot. The mm -hmm. children were developing many bronchial and lung-related conditions. Mm -hmm. And what we ended up with was um, the need for helping them reduce the destruction of the rainforest, uh, spend a lot less time in uh, bringing clean water to the homes. And uh, Rick, you know, what is it that first got you started on this, this project? And talk a little about uh, your passion for uh, clean water and sanitation and why Guatemala and the Mayan Indians? Well. Thank you for having me uh, talk about this. Uh, this started as um, a uh, result of my wife and I spending two years, two different years in 2005 and 2006 on vacation in Guatemala. And both times I made up at the Rotary Club of La Antigua. Uh, the second time I was there, they gave me a CD of uh, their projects and I really didn't uh, spend too much time looking at it until I got back to my Manchester, Connecticut Rotary Club and my president at the time, Marty Finns, had announced two initiatives that the um, district governor at the time, Susan Atkins, had uh, proposed at the PETS conference. And those initiatives were one, that every Rotary Club in our district work on a water and sanitation project, and two, that clubs work together uh, on the same type of projects. So it put a light bulb in my mind. I went back and uh, at home that night, I put the CD in and found out that this Rotary Club had worked on water projects. We had exchanged business cards. So I wrote to them and said, could they help us out? They then put me in touch with an NGO, a non-government organization, known as um, Bearhorst Partners for Development. And they have changed their name in the United States to Aldea, which means village in Spanish. I wrote to them emailed them. They wrote back right away. They said they'd love to work with us and that's how this all started. So we um, went out and I went out to a number of Rotary Clubs. It was actually a dozen that first year. I made presentations. We got approval from Rotary International to work directly with an NGO and then uh, we collected enough money, $24,000 that first year, to complete the village of Cahoma Cha. 
So the following year, my wife and I went and visited it, and um, we were absolutely um, astounded by the welcome that we got, the feeling of thankfulness and gratitude. It just makes a change in their lives that is immeasurable. So that's how this all started, and as I said, it's now been 11 years. We have completed 19 villages, uh, over 7,500 people now have running water and sanitation facilities, and uh, it's just improving their lives immeasur immeasurably. You know, I, I'm uh, very impressed with uh, your passion and the fact that when we start a project like this, hopefully it continues over time and to, to go on for over a decade and making a difference for, for the lives of these poor uh, Mayan Indians. Now, my understanding is that the women were spending up to two hours a day in the rainy season, three hours a day gathering water in the dry season. Mm -hmm. That's time away from education. That's time away from child rearing responsibilities, food gathering. Um, also, the, I guess the, the men and women had to collect wood. And because of the, the stoves that you brought into their home, not only did we were we able to vent the poisonous gases out of their homes, uh, which save lives and improve their yes. health. Uh, we use less of the rainforest as a result of, of, of that that effort. That's and you know, correct. can can you uh, maybe describe some of the the nuts and bolts of what went into the, each of these uh, projects over the okay. last decade? I also think I should emphasize that so many people in our country do not recognize and realize that water uh, on a daily basis is a major problem. And not just in Guatemala, there are many parts of the world. So it uh, becomes almost the entire focus of a day to get water um, in, in, in the sources of water in many parts of the world. It's not potable, you can't drink it. It has to be boiled or, or um, chemically treated. So that uh, makes a big difference because these projects typically work out of um, the a source being a, a, a spring that's trickling out of the rocks and um, the water then goes into a large concrete distribution tank and then it's distributed uh, throughout the whole village. Um, so you're right, it, it, in some villages, believe it or not, the walking distance was 45 minutes each way. So that's mm. an hour and a half of walking, carrying water, um, and they, did it, uh, they do it by carrying these, uh, we call them a jug, but they call it a tinaja on their heads. Uh, some of the slides that I hope will be added into this will show those conditions. Um, the small ones that the children carry uh, weigh 25 pounds. Mm. Uh, at one of the villages they put um, one on my head that was full that the women carry and it's 35 pounds. Oh my! That's an awful lot of weight to carry and doesn't uh, certainly help the human body uh, <laughs> doing that day in and day out. So um, it, it really has made a, um, a wonderful improvement um, and, and the reception that we get uh, is every year is just one of thanks and gratitude, appreciation uh, each time we, we do go to these um, so, so we have clean water, uh, we have a venting uh, stove that uses less of the rainforest and vents poisonous gases, but there was also a sanitation uh, component to what we were doing. And what was that, Rick? Yes. Um, the sanitation facilities in most of these villages before we do the project are perhaps four bamboo posts with plastic wrapped around it and then a hole in the ground. Oh. In some cases, they, uh, they make the whole fence out of bamboo. No roof, obviously no privacy. So um, the project consists of uh, building what are called improved vented pit latrines. And the men dig a hole that goes down um, five meters, that's 17, 18 feet, and then they put a concrete top on it uh, with a hole and then a concrete toilet, uh, and then they build a concrete block outhouse, we would call it, around it with a roof, and then there's a pipe that vents the odors into the atmosphere. Um, it, depending on the size of the family, it's supposed to last between 10 and 20 years. Okay. Um, so, there are components with the water system, as you mentioned, and I call them components. For, uh, there's a total of four in the whole project. One is the water system, bringing the, the water from the spring to a tank and then the pipes 
and I have to mention that the model that is used by this uh, NGO we deal with, Aldea, is that the money that comes from the Rotary Clubs pays for materials only, and it's a one-time, so therefore it has to be sustainable. And the money we pay pays for the concrete, the rebars, the pipes that get distributed, uh, the blocks for the outhouses or, or uh, latrines, uh, but they do all the labor. So the men and the women construct everything, and they have ownership then, and they know how to fix it, they know how to repair it. If uh, a family uh, expands and they have to extend it, they, they can do that all with their own money. You know, I'm finding that, you know, in, in Rotary, in all of our international projects now, the word sustainability is a big part of it. Absolutely. We don't want to just come in and make a difference for a few years. We want this to be an ongoing, really permanent addition to the quality of their life. Uh, and do you find that their involvement as volunteers right from the beginning in, in, increases the chance? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, not only do we get involved uh, as the so-called international partners, and when I say we, it's the anywhere from 35 to 38 Rotary Clubs, mm -hmm. and half of our district just about has been participating in, in terms of clubs, but um, the Rotary Club of, of La Antigua has still become the host, and they have to go to the village. This is part of the grant that I write, uh, the global grant. And they have to go to the village uh, three to four times during the course of a year. And Aldea, the NGO, is up there every week. And it doesn't end when my wife and I go for the celebration and the dedication and everything being finished. For a year afterwards, they by they I mean both the Rotarians and the NGO go for training uh, about sanitation, hygiene, uh, proper uh, balanced meals, nutrition, uh, the, the spacing of children and so forth in the families. So there is just a tremendous amount of input uh, that, that goes to these uh, villages uh, a year after and until the project is completely done. And, I, and I, to, to get to the point of sustainability, uh, part of the grant is that we write into it that one member of the village will be assigned to be the treasurer. And that mm -hmm. person collects a very nominal amount, I mean, maybe a dollar, dollar and a half per month from each family. They put that into a reserve and they have to agree to all this. And that money then is to replace, repair, or to maintain. So uh, your point is sustainable. We pay for the initial materials, they build it, and now they learn how to continue it. And, and the villages that we have done now over 11 years, when we go back each year, we are told they are still operating properly, mm -hmm. uh, they are sustaining it, they're maintaining it, and so that's the really good part. Yes. It's not abandoned. The, you know, for those uh, that aren't in Rotary, uh, it's important to remember that uh, each global project has a foreign uh, Rotary Club involved. You know, yes. so we, we work in partnership when we do this to have what we call boots on the ground, you know, Rotarians that will take responsibility for the projects that we're doing as we're doing them, and then obviously afterwards as well. Right. So I, I think, you know, when we're in 200 countries, you know, one point, you know, two million Rotarians, that's a, that's a force for, for good. And the, the other thing is there's no profit in Rotary. Um, have no. you ever received a salary, Rick, you no. know, since no. you've been doing this for the no. last decade? Not a penny. All of my expenses, uh, the travel, um, lodging, food, I pay for myself. Yes. Um, there is a component in these global grants that allows to have one volunteer traveler get reimbursed. Um, I have found that the paperwork involved becomes a little cumbersome. <laughs> you have to travel and take air flights when Rotary tells you. So therefore, uh, we find it easier to make our own arrangements and we volunteer on our, uh, so it's all our dime, if you will. Yes, you know, I, I think, um, you know, when you realize all the good that Rotary's doing, and we're doing it as volunteers, again, with the motto, service above self. I, it, it really is, uh, is heartwarming that we're making such a difference throughout for everyone that are, uh, that are, that are involved. Now, um, the, you know, I'm wondering um, if, as we um, look at the way the global grants are functioning, functioning can people other than Rotarians 
contribute to a project like this, and how would they do that? I know it's we tend to tend to be kind of insular very often uh, in terms of how we fund these things. But how does the global grant work? And you know, how much have we raised over this last decade um, as Rotarians with the global partners that we've had? And I, I think it's very important that we identify partners when we do projects like this because uh, it just strengthens our projects. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you found a, a very good partner uh, that, that's assisting. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really two questions, you know, you know, how does the global grant work? And then two, um, you know, what what is it that's so important about the partnerships that Rotary develops with other organizations? Well, I'll touch upon the global grant part first. Um, I think it was about five years ago <clears throat> that Rotary International changed from what were called matching grants to global grants. And the idea of global was they wanted to have a bigger impact. And the minimum dollar amount is $30,000. Now, if a Rotary Club or an individual, and we've had individuals, and this year I'm absolutely pleased to say I have had two, I do have two charitable uh, foundations, uh, each of which are giving $10,000 oh to the global grants I'm working on this year. Um, when the Rotary Club or those individuals or the um, charitable organizations donate to the foundation, it gets matched 50 cents per dollar. So those two $10,000 contributions are $30,000. Wow. And it's really needed this year because one of the grants I'm working on is just under $96,000, $97,000. Uh, when the district, such as our district, has been uh, generous enough to contribute $10,000 each year for, I think it's been five years, that gets matched by the foundation dollar for dollar. So the $10,000 becomes $20,000. So my um, mission has been to go to Rotary Clubs, uh, do the presentation that I have, a PowerPoint, explain to them the project, uh, how, how just it benefits these people tremendously, and ask if they can uh, support the project. And Rotary uh, does require that um, each club try to get involved with an international project every year. And this is a simple way that they can give whatever they feel they can afford. And there's no maximum, there's no minimum. Uh, so I pool, if you will, all those funds together and that's how we get the uh, global grant completed. So I hope I answered both of your questions. That, <laughs> well, that it, that's how the grant works. Um, yes. Once the funding gets completed and we have raised all the funds and they're sent into the foundation, they then electronically transfer to the Rotary Club of La Antigua in Guatemala. They have to set, set up a separate bank account or checking account for every project. Once the project gets underway and they have the funds, the NGO we're dealing with, this Aldea, or Bear Horse Partners for Development, will order, let's say, uh, so many thousand feet, or down there it's meters of piping or rebar and so forth. They bring the bill to the Rotary Club and the Rotary Club pays the bill. So all the money stays with Rotary and we make sure that every dollar, uh, every penny is accounted for. So it stays with Rotary and we make sure that it gets paid for properly. Now for those that are watching our video, if they want to make a contribution, what we're going to do is, is put up on the, on the screen you know, where that contribution could be made, how they make out the okay. check, and it's totally deductible as I understand. Yes, it is, yes. Okay. Rotary is, a, uh, what, 501c3, yes. and so it's, <laughs> it's a fully deductible uh, uh, charitable contribution. And, and what's the administrative load? You're very often in, in um, you know, charitable giving, people look at the amount that's being paid in fundraising and, you know, administration, and they say, well, I'm, almost none of my money is going to work. What's the case uh, with, with uh, Rotary? Well, with these... It looks like there's a match, so you're actually, your contribution is, is uh, increased by, that's right. by the match. That's correct. When uh, my time, uh, or our time, uh, is, there's no cost to that. That's all volunteer. The same with the Rotary Club of La Antigua. The foundation, the Rotary Foundation, does allow the NGO that we're dealing with to charge 10% maximum for their services because they have uh, like construction uh, people who go to these villages once a week to see that they have the right number of pipes and the valves and the fittings and to oversee the whole construction of the project. 
So there is a very small component um, out, out of what we and we ask people to contribute that, that, it, that is paid to somebody. It seems to me that's a very necessary component, having oh, it that, is. that it kind is. of yeah. technical yeah. support so the project can go, go forward. Right. It almost doesn't sound like administrative overhead to me. No, and the NGO we deal with um, has, I believe it's um, 11 or 12 employees. All but one are of indigenous Mayan descent. Oh my. And the reason this is important is for example, in March of this year, when Ellen and I visited uh, the three villages that were finished, uh, Kohoya, Sheshachbin, and uh, Pachak, the first village we went to on a Friday, uh, Kohoya, the members of the village mainly spoke Ketchikal, which is a Mayan dialect. The, they had to have it translated to Spanish and then from Spanish to English so we could understand what was <laughs> happening. So the, the people who work in this NGO, not only do they know the culture, the politics, but the language. Now, Guatemala is a Spanish-speaking country, uh, but up in these mountainous regions, the Mayans continue to talk in Quechical, uh, Quiche, Mam, and dialects that most uh, the people in the Rotary Club don't understand uh, from you know, the city of La Antigua. But when they go with the uh, Aldea uh, people, they can get it translated. That's, that's an incredible. Um, the, you know, as we look at um, you know, what we're, we're doing here, I can't tell you how proud Rotary is of, of, of uh, your efforts, Rick, and everything we've, we've accomplished. Um, can we spend a moment on just, you know, how much has been raised? Uh, again, I okay. think you have a little chart we can put up for the folks uh, on what was raised and how many people we've impacted. Okay, that uh, chart does show that we are over, I believe it's 650,000, almost 675,000 as of last Rotary year. This year, I'm working on two separate grants. And I believe the total is going to be about another hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So we're Whoa. we're getting close to almost a million dollars that we have raised um, in these 11, 12. It'll be 12 years this year. Uh, the number of people, it's uh, I believe it's like over seven thousand six hundred people now have, uh, as I mentioned, the four components: the water system, the uh, grease traps, the uh, pit latrines and the stoves. There's, those are the four parts that, uh, that I call components. Um, and the, the villages vary in terms of the family size. Uh, some of them have 40, 50, 60 families, but in total it's over 7,500, 600 people. Whoa, that's incredible. You know, I, I, that's a lot to be proud of. The, um, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is um, as we look at what you're doing here, and I know you're our water sanitation uh, fellow, uh, for, for the whole district. You know, there's also a project uh, that we have going in uh, Cambodia right mm -hmm. now. And as I understand, you know, as I start, as we start in Rotary, understanding the extent to which w waterborne diseases are, are, are really killing our, our young children around mm -hmm. the world. Um, you know, and Cambodia faces a particular uh, a challenge in that China has dammed a lot of the rivers that provide water into Cambodia, so only something like 10, 20 percent of the water uh, that used to flow into Indochina is going there, and that it has been polluted by the industries that China has, so that even the fish they're, they're eating out of the, out of the rivers, um, you know, there's, uh, I'm so proud that our, our district is also supporting a Cambodia water project here on a different continent uh, mm -hmm. where villagers, I mean, if you looked at the water, you wouldn't uh, want to put your hands in right. it, quite That's frankly. True. And they're having to drink it, they're having to bathe in it, and uh, we have a, a filtration. Uh, what, what do you see really as the, as the future? of water and sanitation with Rotary. I mean, there's su such incredible needs. Are you, you know, we've got to be hopeful. Sometimes yes, it can be yeah. overwhelming when we, we look at the global village and realize the extent to which uh, we have a crisis around the globe. I, I agree, and uh, I believe it was in uh, 2004, uh, the Rotary president, Jonathan Majiagbi from Nigeria, actually proposed that Rotary clubs all over the world become involved with the water and sanitation project every year. 
Um, but I, as you know, and I hope many people know that Rotary has been leading the uh, drive to eradicate polio. And we've had posters that say we're this close to eradicating polio. When it comes to water and sanitation, that's how close we are. It's, it's a bigger problem. And I'm proud also that our district has had projects, water projects, in the past in Africa, mm -hmm. India, um, as you mentioned, Cambodia. Uh, in Guatemala, the same thing happens. People wash their clothing. Uh, animals defecate nearby streams, so the surface water is contaminated. Um, I do believe that we're going to start to see a bigger emphasis in Rotary from the top down that as we make that gap for polio smaller and smaller and we completely eradicate it, uh, water and sanitation projects are going to become supported and emphasized even more. So I'm happy that our district has more than just what I've been doing in Guatemala. And uh, that's, uh, believe me, it's not the only place in the world that has water problems. There are many others, and we really feel that this is something that's um, uh, a necessary evil that has to be eradicated. Yes. Well, with the uh, changes in climate, with the water aquifers uh, drying up around the world, mm -hmm. you know, with, um, you know, the challenges that creates for uh, agriculture, for uh, just having water for basic living needs. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to, have to say, Rick, we're very, very proud of, of what you've been doing in Guatemala. You're a pace setter. Thank You're you. a leader in Rotary. Um, and that you can uh, continue to con this effort on your own coin so that more dollars in our projects are, are being used for the benefit of, of uh, these indigenous people is, is very, very uh, heartwarming. And um, I am uh, so proud of uh, the direction that our district and Rotary International is taking by, by addressing this global crisis. You know, Thank I'm, you. you're, you're saving lives and you're making a difference in, in um, so many areas of, of the world. Any final thoughts? We have about one minute to go here. Well, I would like to say that it, uh, to me, was, as Rotarians say, that Rotary moment when 11 years ago uh, we drove into this village of Cahoma Cha and it was the first village. We didn't know what to expect. It was completely decorated with balloons and you know, the little chains that the kids make. And we looked around and thought, oh my gosh, what's all this about? You know, we were there to give a plaque that would show all the clubs that, that had, partic had participated and funded the project. And I do that every year now. Um, and it's permanently mounted on part of the water system. And uh, I have to admit, I had tears in my eyes. The, the thankfulness that the fact that we had raised some money and this is what it resulted. It's just so heartwarming. Thank you, Rick, for an outstanding uh, job over a decade. Thank you. And we look forward to working for you a long time into the future. You know, thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you, everyone, for joining us at Rotary Making a Difference uh, here at the West Hartford Channel 5 uh, TV station. Thank you very much.